Let's see if you have the math skills to figure out how to solve this problem. All right, so here is the question. Dan can shovel a driveway in 30 minutes and Jay can do the same job in 20 minutes. So how long would it take uh, for them to clear this driveway if they work together? All right, so that is the problem. Feel free to use a calculator, but uh, if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm gonna show you the correct solution in just one second. Then of course, I'm gonna solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly tell you who I am. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help in mathematics, come on over to my site, tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so one more time, here is the problem. So Dan can shovel the driveway in 30 minutes and Jay can shovel the same driveway in 20 minutes. Now, if they team up and work together, how long is it uh, going to take them? Now, before I show you the answer, just try to use some common sense here, right? So we got 30 minutes here for Dan and 20 minutes here uh, for Jay. So what do you think the time has to be, right? So in terms of what is the maximum amount, maximum amount of time for this job to get done? Well, I'm going to show you an answer here that a lot of people put down, and it's totally wrong, and you'll see why in just one second. But uh, let's take a look at the correct solution. The right answer is 12 minutes. Now, if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face and an A+. Plus. Uh, so that is fantastic. But uh, a lot of people put down 25 minutes, right? So maybe they're saying, well, I'll just average the times together. So 30 minutes and 20 minutes. So maybe in between here is 25 minutes. But uh, this answer makes no sense, right? So if Jay by himself can do the job in 20 minutes, if he has Dan's help, is it going to take it? Uh, is the time to do the job going to be longer than Jay can do it by himself, right? No, it's not. So the answer, of course, has to be less than 20 minutes because Jay can do this job by himself in 20 minutes. So if Dan is helping out, well, you would expect the answer to be under 20 minutes. So let's see exactly how to solve this problem. Now, the first step in solving any math word problem or any problem at that is to make sure you actually understand the question. And when it comes to uh, word problems, I'm gonna recommend that you use the rule of three, and that is read the problem at least three times before you start doing anything, and try to come up with a common sense approach in terms of what you think the answer could be or, or should be. So in this problem, again, we would expect the final answer to be under 20 minutes. But uh, let's take a look again at the question. So Dan can shovel this driveway in 30 minutes, and Jay can uh, shovel the same driveway in 20 minutes. So how long is this going to take if they work together? Well, there's a couple different ways to think about how to solve this problem, but I am going to use algebra and I'm going to give you a little formula here. And uh, in algebra, this type of uh, problem would be defined as an algebra work word problem. And if you remember this uh, little formula here, uh, solving these types of problems is going to be very easy. So here is this little formula, and I'm going to explain it right now. So we have two people, right? So we have Dan and Jay, but uh, work problems can be things that involve people or machines. Like, for example, we have one machine that can clear the driveway in 30 minutes and another machine that can do the same job in 20 minutes. So anytime you have a problem that involves uh, work, whether it's people or machines, and then you wanna find out, well, how long will it take if these machines or people work together? Well, just remember this little formula right here. So this is how this works. So uh, the way you're gonna figure this out is one over T. Now T is the time that these people or machines work together. So this is what we're looking for. So one over the time it takes for uh, these people to work together is equal to one over the time it takes one person plus one over the time it takes the second person or machine. And this can go on and on and on. 
All right, so I think uh, this is a little bit confusing all by itself. So the best way to really understand this uh, formula is to apply it. So let's go to the problem and start kind of identifying the things that we need to uh, use in order to solve this problem. So we're looking for the time it takes for them to work together. So we're looking for this variable t in this formula right here. So what we need to do here is identify the times for each people. And when you're solving a problem like this, you want to kind of delineate, you want to write out each step. All right, so Dan uh, takes 30 minutes to uh, clear the driveway or shovel the driveway in J takes 20 minutes. So we'll call uh, Dan's time uh, P1 and we'll call J's time P2. All right, so now the next step is to plug this into the formula and solve the equation. So once again, here is our algebra work formula. So it's one over T, and again, T is what we're looking for. This is the time, uh, the combined time, if these two people work together. All right, so we're solving for T, but uh, we know P1 and P2, these are the respective times of uh, Dan and Jay. Again, we kind of already listed this out. So Dan's time is 30 minutes and Jay time, Jay's time excuse me, is 20 minutes. So we're going to plug in 30 for P1 and 20 for P2. So now we have this uh, equation or formula. 1 over T is equal to 1 over 30 plus 1 over 20. Okay, so from this point for, forward, all we have to do is solve this algebraic equation. And we're talking about something called a rational equation. So let's get into the algebra right now. So 1 over t is equal to 1 over 30 plus 1 over 20. Now, the easiest way to solve this uh, type of equation is to multiply the entire thing by the lowest common denominator. But uh, really, we're just looking at these numbers right here. So that's 30 and 20. So the LCD of these two numbers right here is 60. So we're just trying to kind of clean up some of these fractions here. So technically, the lowest common denominator would be a 60t, but we're just going to use a 60 here just to kind of clean up some of these fractions. Okay, so let's multiply both the left and right hand side by 60. So 60 times 1 over t, oh, that's the first uh, thing that we're going to do. Then we're going to take this 60 and multiply by 1 over 30, and then 60 times 1 over 20. So let's go ahead and do those steps right now. So 60 times 1 over t, so this is 60 over 1. We're multiplying fractions. So 60 times 1 is 60. 1 times t is t. So our first step here is going to uh, yield 60 over t. All right, so now we're going to take this 60 over 1 or 60 and multiply it by 1 over 30. So we're going to end up with 60 over 30. Well, of course, that is 2. And then 60 times 1 over 20 or 60 over 1 times 1 over 20 is 3, right? We'll end up with 60 over 20. So we're down to 60 over t is equal to 2 plus 3. Okay, so now uh, let's go ahead and um, clean this up. And this is not that difficult, but uh, again, if you don't know the algebra here or how to solve rational equations, uh, this is going to be confusing. All right, so 60 over t is equal to 2 plus 3. Of course, that is 5. So what we want to do here is think of this as a proportion. So we want to think of 5 as a fraction. So we'll just put it over 1. So in mathematics, uh, a proportion is two equal fractions. So for example, if I have the fraction 1 half, a fraction that is equivalent to 1 half would be, for example, 3 over 6. But anytime you have two fractions that are equal, and here we have a fraction, and we're saying it's equal to this fraction right here. So like this example, right? So this is a proportion, but the main thing that you want to remember is that the cross products are equal. So 2 times 3 is what? Well, that is 6, and 1 times 6 is 6. So when you have a proportion, you always want to use the cross product to solve a proportion equation. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and simply cross multiply. So we're going to end up, uh, end up with 5 times t, which is 5t and 60 times 1, which, of course, is 60. So let me go ahead and show you those steps right now. Okay, now this is not the only way to solve this problem, but I think this is the easiest way. So 5 times t is 5t. 60 times 1 is 60. 
So now to solve for t, all we have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 5. So 60 divided by 5 is 12. So t is equal to 12. And remember, our units of measure are in minutes. So the correct answer is 12 minutes. Now, if you got this right, again, that is outstanding. You definitely deserve a nice, happy face. And uh, again, I'm using algebra to figure this out. But a lot of you out there probably got uh, the right answer and used another uh, technique or another approach, and that is perfectly fine. But uh, I can tell you that uh, work problems get quite involved, and you definitely want to be familiar with this formula and how to use it. But hopefully this little video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you need help with algebra, check out my algebra courses and my other math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.